Information about when and how to use the following meditation, along with a written transcript of the practice, can be found in the book, The Mindfulness Solution, Everyday Practices for Everyday Problems, by Dr. Ronald Siegel. Please feel free to tell others how to access this recording at www.mindfulness-solution.com but please do not independently reproduce or distribute this copyrighted recording without permission. Thank you. This practice will take about 20 minutes, and we're going to begin with about five minutes of just being with the breath. So find a comfortable posture in which your spine is more or less erect, Let your eyes close and notice that you're already breathing. Bring your attention to the breath either in the rising and falling sensations in the belly or the sensations at the tip of the nose. and see if you can follow the breath for a complete cycle or two. From the beginning of an inhalation to the point of relative fullness, back down to where the lungs are empty, and another cycle begins. When thoughts enter the mind, just make a note that you're thinking and gently return your attention back to the breath. See if you can bring some interest or curiosity to the moment-to-moment -moment changing sensations of the breath, noticing how each one is different from the one before it.
just gently return your attention to the breath every time that it becomes hijacked by a chain of narrative thinking. Now that you've settled into the breath for a little bit, and if you'd like you can pause this recording and spend some more time with the breath before proceeding if your mind is agitated or very distracted. But if you have a bit of concentration, allow yourself to imagine how it felt when you were a child. Imagine yourself sitting in your current posture, but with your childhood body. What might you have been wearing? How did you feel inside that body? Just be the child you once were for a few minutes. Particularly remembering what the sensations were like, how you experienced the world as a child. What did it feel like to be inside this body? Next imagine yourself, still as a child, now naked, looking in a mirror. Start at your feet and gradually look in your mind's eye at your legs, at your belly, at your chest, your neck, your head. Take in how you appeared on the outside and how you felt on the inside. What was it like to look in the mirror and see this youngster staring back at you? Next, bring your attention to how it felt sitting as you're currently sitting when you were a teenager or young adult. If you're currently that age, imagine what it was like just a few years ago. Feel what it was like to inhabit that body.
How did the world feel as you moved through space in that body? And now, as you had done earlier with the sense of yourself as a younger child, imagine yourself as a young adult or teenager, naked, looking in the mirror. Again, if you're currently that age, imagine a few years ago. And start at your feet and gradually look at your legs, your midsection, your chest, your neck, your head. Take in this teenage or young adult body as it felt on the inside and how it looked on the outside. If in doing this practice you discover that one age is particularly difficult to be with, you might try directing loving-kindness toward the image of yourself at that age, so that if it was difficult to be with yourself as a child, direct loving-kindness toward that child, or the same as a teenager or young adult, or as we move forward through other ages, you can do it with any of those too. So hold the image in your mind of the person you see and suggest, may you be happy. May you be peaceful. May you be free from suffering. Or any other phrases that you feel would be helpful to that person. And now come back to your breath for a few moments and feel what it's like to be inside this current body and breathing. Feel how this body is similar or different from the one from your childhood and your young adult years. And now picture in your mind this body, your current body, as though you were standing naked in the mirror. Again, begin at your feet 
and move up and look at your legs, your midsection, your chest, your neck, your head. See in your mind what your current body looks like. And next, allow yourself to imagine what it will feel like to be sitting at your next, next developmental milestone. So depending on your current age, that could be as an adult, or perhaps middle-aged, or perhaps elderly. But just think of whatever you imagine to be your next developmental life stage and imagine sitting in this posture at that age. Notice what that would feel like. How would it be similar or different from your current experience? And now imagine yourself naked looking in the mirror at that next developmental milestone. How would your body look? Begin at your feet and look at your legs, your midsection, your chest, your neck, your head. Imagine in your mind's eye your body's next stage of development. And then move forward in time again to what perhaps for you would be either middle-aged or retirement or old age. And see what that next step would feel like. How it would feel to sit here at that age. And then imagine looking at yourself in the mirror at that age. Again, starting at your feet and moving up to your legs, your abdomen, your chest, your neck, your head. How would you look at that next older stage?
and then finally imagine yourself near the end of your life. To imagine what it would feel like to be sitting in this posture near the end of your life. What the body might feel like from the inside. And then imagine yourself looking at the mirror and your body near the end of your life. Again, starting at your feet and moving up through your legs, your midsection, your chest, your neck, your head. And now finally, for the last few moments of this practice, bring your attention back to the present and back to your breath. And notice the rising and falling sensations in the belly as you breathe, or the sensations at the tip of your nose. and bring yourself back to the present moment. And listen as I ring the bell from the beginning of the sound until it trails off into space. Information about when and how to use the following meditation, along with a written transcript of the practice, can be found in the book, The Mindfulness Solution, Everyday Practices for Everyday Problems, by Dr. Ronald Siegel. Please feel free to tell others how to access this recording at www.mindfulness-solution.com but please do not independently reproduce or distribute this copyrighted recording without permission. Thank you. This meditation, the body scan, will take about 45 minutes to complete listening to this recording. After doing it with the recording, you can try it on your own and adjust the pace to do it more quickly or more slowly. We're going to start with a few minutes of breath awareness practice. So whether you're sitting in a chair, on a cushion, or a meditation bench, or perhaps lying down, 
Notice either the rising and falling in the belly with each breath, or the sensations at the tip of the nose with each in-breath and out-breath. If you'd found it helpful when we did the breath sampler to either count the breaths or note rising and falling or in and out, it's fine to do that also. Just have most of your attention on the breath and try to settle into being aware of whatever's happening right now with acceptance. Should you notice your mind beginning to wander, gently bring it back to the sensations of the breath. Now begin to allow the breath to be more in the background and bring your attention to the sensations of contact with the chair or cushion or bench and the floor if you're sitting or with the floor, couch or bed if you're lying down. Notice all of the complex sensations associated with your body being supported while gravity gently pulls you downward. See how these sensations aren't solid, but change minutely from moment to moment. Now that you have a sense of your body in space and your breath coming and going, begin to bring your attention to the toes of your left foot. Notice all of the different sensations coming from those toes. Observe whether they're warm or cold, relaxed or tense,
Don't try to adjust them or fix them in any way. But just bring your full attention to the sensations of the toes of your left foot and see if you can notice how the sensations there are not actually solid, but rather they're made up of a series of momentary micro sensations strung together over time. Notice them subtly changing from moment to moment. As when attending to the breath, should your mind wander off into a chain of narrative thoughts, just gently bring them back, bring it back to the sensations of the toes. Next, bring your attention to the sensations coming from the top of the left foot. Feel everything that's happening there. Notice whether the sensations there are pleasant or unpleasant. Take in whether the top of the foot feels warm or cold, relaxed or tense. See how these sensations too are made up of many, many micro sensations strung together. We're not trying to get the foot to relax or do anything special. We're just using the sensations in the foot as an object of, of our awareness, a way to practice being aware of present experience with acceptance. Next, bring your attention to the bottom of the left foot. See what sensations are happening there. See if you can bring some interest and curiosity to the experience of those sensations. And now let's move up to the ankle of the left foot. Notice whatever's happening there. If some parts of the body don't have particularly strong sensations coming from them, that's fine. Notice the subtle sensations or even the sense of no sensation coming from that area. Now bring your attention to the calf of your left leg. Notice whether that's warm or cold, tense or relaxed. Notice any sensations you can perceive in your left calf.
again if the mind wanders or begins a commentary about the experience of doing this, just notice where the mind has gone and gently bring your attention back to the sensations of your left calf. And now move on to the shin of your left leg, the area in front opposite your calf. Notice whatever sensations are happening there. Allow yourself to continue to breathe, but allow the breath to be in the background as you focus your attention on the sensations coming from your shin. Now bring your attention to the left knee. front, the back, the whole knee. See whatever sensations are occurring there. Sometimes knees can be a little bit painful. If there are pain sensations coming from the knee, allow yourself to open to those pain sensations. Feel them fully. Next, bring your attention to your left thigh. Again, see what sensations are happening there. Warm, cold, relaxed, tense. And now attend to the back of the left thigh, where your hamstrings are. See what sensations are happening there. And finally, for the left leg, bring your attention to the groin and the hip, the area where the leg connects to your torso. And just see what sensations are coming from your groin and your hip. Now that you've thoroughly explored the left leg, 
bring your attention to the right leg, beginning, as we did with the left, with the toes. Warm or cold, relaxed or tense, whatever sensations are arising from the toes, give them your full attention. Now move your attention to the top of the right foot. See what's happening there. Continuing to breathe, bring your attention to the bottom of the right foot. Notice all of the little sensations coming from that area. Now bring your attention to the ankle of the right foot. See the sensations coming from your right ankle. And next, observe what's happening in the calf of the right leg. Is it tense or relaxed? Warm or cold? Perhaps there are very few sensations emanating from there. Just bring your full attention to whatever's happening. Examine it with interest and curiosity. And move on to the right shin. See what's happening there. Continue to allow your breath to be in the background. And if the mind wanders off into some kind of chain of thought, just bring it back to the sensations of your chin of your shin. And now move on to your right knee. Notice if it's tense or relaxed, warm or cold, painful or without pain.
Now examine the sensations of your right thigh. Feel what's happening in the front where the quadriceps are. And then notice the back where your hamstrings are. And then bring your attention to your right hip and your right groin. Feel how the leg attaches to your torso. And notice any sensations that are arising there. Now that you've examined both legs, begin to shift your attention to your belly. Notice how it rises and falls with each breath. See if there are any other sensations coming from the belly. Then move your attention a little higher to the chest area. Notice how it too moves a bit with each breath. Examine any other sensations coming there. Feel the sense of your heart in your chest. Perhaps you can feel it beating. And then bring your attention to your neck. See if it's relaxed or tense. A lot of us carry tension in our necks. Just notice all of the sensations that are there. Not trying to change anything, just to be observant. Now we're going to bring our attention back to the base of the torso and feel your buttocks, whether sitting on the floor or a bench or a cushion or lying against 
a couch, a bed, or the floor. Notice all the sensations of contact between your buttocks and whatever is supporting them. And next move on to the lower back, another area where many of us carry tension. Just see whatever sensations arise there. See if there's any pain or discomfort in the lower back. Just breathe and allow yourself to notice all of the sensations. Now bring your attention to the mid-back. See how that feels similar or different from the lower back. Notice what's happening there. You may sense it expanding and contracting a bit with your breath. And finally, notice the upper back, the area below your neck and between your shoulders. Another place we carry a lot of tension. Notice the sensations there. And next we're going to go out to the arms. So let's start with your left arm and begin as we did with the leg at the end. So start with your fingers and notice any sensations happening in the fingers of your left hand, whether they're tense or relaxed, warm or cold. Just feel all the sensations happening there. Then notice the sensations of your left palm. See how that feels different or similar to what you feel in the fingers. And now move on to the back of the left hand and see whatever sensations are happening there. Now move your attention to your left wrist. 
is another place that some people carry tension. See whether it feels relaxed or tense, warm or cold. And let yourself continue to breathe. And then notice the left forearm. See whatever sensations are coming from there. Feel the front of your forearm and the back of your forearm. Next, bring your attention to the left upper arm. Notice whatever feelings are happening there. And finally, bring your attention to your left shoulder. See whether it's relaxed or tense, warm or cold, comfortable or perhaps a little painful. So having explored the left arm and hand, let's bring our attention to the right arm and hand. Begin with the fingers of your right hand and notice what sensations are happening there. Notice whether they're warm or cold, tense or relaxed. And then notice the palm of your right hand. Whatever sensations are happening there. and move on to bring your attention to the back of the right hand. Again, if at any point your mind wanders off into a chain of thought, just gently bring it back to the sensations in your hand. Next, bring your attention to your right wrist. See if it's tense or relaxed. Feel all the sensations happening there.
Now feel your right forearm. The front of it, the back of it. Notice whatever sensations are occurring there. And now notice the sensations in your right upper arm. Again, the front side and the back side of it. See if there's tension. Just notice whatever's happening there. And now continuing to breathe, bring your attention to your right shoulder. See if it's tense or relaxed, comfortable or painful. Just notice all the micro sensations coming from your right shoulder. And now coming back to the center of your body, notice again the sensations in your neck, whether it's relaxed or tense, comfortable or uncomfortable. Feel the front and the back of the neck. Now bring your attention forward to your chin. And notice any sensations you can feel coming from your chin. And breathe. Next, notice the sensations in and around your mouth. Again, whether there's tension or not. Comfort or discomfort. The mouth has so many nerve endings. See if you can sense all of the different sensations coming from the mouth. Next, notice your cheeks. See what sensations come from them.
and then move on to your nose. Notice the sensations of the air coming in and out of your nostrils with each breath. See if there are also any other sensations coming from the nose. And now notice the sensations around your eyes. Are they relaxed or tense? Warm or cold? And now bring your attention to your forehead, another area many of us carry tension in. Notice whatever sensations are happening there. And then feel your ears. Notice both the experience of hearing that's associated with your ears, as well as the sensations of the ears themselves. The outer ear. and continuing to move toward the back of the head, feel the sensations that happen there. Notice whatever you can feel at the back of your head. And then finally bring your attention up to the top of your head. See if you can detect any sensations there. Now for the last few moments of this exercise, let your attention come back to your breath, either in the belly or at the tip of the nose. And feel your whole body in the background, from the tips of your toes and the ends of your fingers all the way in to your torso and up to your face and head. Just take in the whole breathing being.
and listen as I ring a bell to the sound of the bell from the beginning of the ring until it trails off into space and can no longer be heard. Information about when and how to use the following meditation, along with a written transcript of the practice, can be found in the book, The Mindfulness Solution, Everyday Practices for Everyday Problems, by Dr. Ronald Siegel. Please feel free to tell others how to access this recording at www.mindfulness-solution.com but please do not independently reproduce or distribute this copyrighted recording without permission. Thank you. For the next 30 minutes or so, we'll do some breath awareness practice. So find a comfortable posture, whether sitting in a chair or on meditation cushions or using a bench. and begin to notice that if all is going well, you're already breathing. Allow your spine to be more or less erect and alert, and feel the sensations of breath in the body There are a number of different ways that this can be done, but for this exercise right now, just notice the breath in the belly. Notice as you breathe in, the belly rises a little bit, and as you breathe out, it falls a little bit. There's no need to control the breath. Simply allow it to come in and out naturally. It doesn't matter whether the breaths are short and shallow or long and deep. This isn't a breathing exercise, but rather an opportunity to bring the attention back to the present to be aware of what's happening at the moment and to embrace it with acceptance. and see if you can develop some continuity of awareness by following the breath through entire cycles from the beginning of an in inhalation to the point where the lungs are relatively full back down to the point where the lungs are relatively empty and another cycle begins
Before long, you'll probably notice that thoughts enter the mind. These are perfectly fine. As soon as you notice that the mind has become hijacked into a chain of narrative thought, just gently bring it back to the sensations of the breath. This is a little like puppy training. The mind wanders off, we gently bring it back to the breath. It wanders off again, we gently bring it back to the breath again. Try to bring an attitude of interest or curiosity to each breath. Notice how each cycle is slightly different from the one that came before and is slightly different from the one that follows it. We're practicing awareness of our current experience with acceptance and using the breath as an anchor, as a way to pay attention to what's happening right here, right now.
Be patient with yourself the way you would be patient with a puppy. The mind will wander off many, many times, and each time it wanders, you gently bring it back to the sensations of the rising and falling of the belly with each breath. Should some discomfort in the body arise and you notice an urge to move or to scratch an itch, experiment a bit with holding the body still and just noticing that urge arise and see if it passes by itself. There's no need to be extremely stoic about this, but sometimes learning to not scratch the itch to just stay with the sensation is illuminating. We see that the urge to fix the problem sometimes arises and passes all by itself, even if we don't do anything about it. Should the mind become calm and focused, that's okay. Should the mind be very active and frisky, that's okay also. Whatever arises, we greet with acceptance and bring the attention back to the rising and falling sensations of the breath.
each time the mind wanders off into another chain of thought. We congratulate ourselves on noticing that we're thinking, noticing where the mind has gone, and then gently bring it back to the experience of the rising and falling sensations of the breath in the belly. attending to each breath as though it were a special experience, something we wouldn't want to miss. And now allowing the breath to be a little bit in the background, 
we'll begin to bring our attention to other sensory experiences happening right now. So begin by listening to the ocean of sound around us. Just listen as you might listen to a symphony or the sounds of nature on a summer evening. However quiet or noisy, notice all of the different notes, all of the sounds striking your ears. Again, as you do this, if your mind wanders off into a chain of thought, just gently bring it back to the sensations of the sounds surrounding you. Next, allowing your breath again to stay a little bit in the background, notice the sensations of contact between your body and the chair or the floor or the meditation bench. Just notice all of the points of contact and notice the hundreds of sensations that happen at each point of contact. See how these sensations are not actually solid, but are made up of hundreds of micro sensations strung together. Next, bring your attention to the sensations of contact with the ocean of air that surrounds you. So anywhere that you can feel the air touching your body, your face, your hands, any other exposed areas, just notice the very subtle sensations of contact.
you might notice the air entering and leaving your body at the tip of your nose. How it's a bit cool in the inhalation and a bit warmer on the exhalation. Just notice all of the points of contact with the air and how many hundreds of sensations are available to consciousness at every moment. And next, allow your eyes to open just gently and just a little bit so that your gaze is cast down in front of you at, say, a 45 degree angle or so. And just take in the visual field as an artist might. Notice the colors, the texture, the contrast. Without labeling the objects in the visual field, just notice how much is going on right here and right now visually. Notice too how the visual field isn't solid, but how it seems to pulsate or vibrate just a little bit. And now for the last few moments of this practice, see if you can sit and open simultaneously to everything that's happening. The sensations of the visual field, the ocean of air that surrounds us, the contact with the chair or the ground or the cushion or the bench, the ocean of sounds, the sensations of breath. Sit in the midst of it all and allow it all to unfold moment by moment. Notice how rich and complex the sensations of the present moment are. And to bring this to a close, I'm going to ring a bell, and I want to invite you to listen to the sound of the bell from the beginning of the ring until it's trailed off into space and you can no longer hear it.
Information about when and how to use the following meditation, along with a written transcript of the practice, can be found in the book, The Mindfulness Solution, Everyday Practices for Everyday Problems, by Dr. Ronald Siegel. Please feel free to tell others how to access this recording at www.mindfulness-solution.com but please do not independently reproduce or distribute this copyrighted recording without permission. Thank you. This practice requires two people, and while it can feel pretty intense and intimate, it actually can work well both with loved ones and with people who know each other less well. It's helpful if both partners have at least some experience with meditation practice. It'll take us about 30 minutes to do this together. So please begin by sitting comfortably facing one another. Find postures in which your spines are relatively erect. And allow your eyes to close. We're going to begin by doing about 10 minutes of breath awareness training together. For this particular exercise, bring your attention to the sensations in your belly. Notice the rising sensation as you breathe in and the falling sensation as you breathe out. See if you can follow the breath through full cycles, from the beginning of an inhalation, to the point of relative fullness, back down till the lungs are relatively empty, and a new cycle begins. You may notice some feelings of apprehension or perhaps anxiety doing this facing your partner. Just allow those feelings to arise and pass as they will, returning your, sense, your attention to the breath. Whenever you notice your mind wandered into perhaps a train of discursive thought or to some other sensations in the room or in your body, just gently bring your attention back to the rising and falling sensations in the belly. Approach each breath with interest and curiosity, experiencing its texture, its shape. Notice how no two breaths are identical.
when you notice that your mind has wandered, as it naturally will, just gently and caringly bring it back to the sensations of the breath in the belly. We breathe together as though there's nowhere else to go, nothing else to do, just this moment, together, and this breath. rising and falling, rising and falling. Each time the mind wanders, we bring our attention back to the sensations in the belly. So now that you've been with your breath for a little while, both of you gently open your eyes and allow your gazes to cast down on your partner's belly. Watch the breath of your partner as you continue to observe 
the rising and falling sensations in your own belly. Just be open to both experiences. What you see with your eyes, in your partner, and what you experience in your own body. It's possible that your breathing and your partner's breathing will begin to synchronize, and it's just as possible that it won't. Either way, just take in whatever's happening and notice what the experience feels like. During this phase also, if you find that your mind has wandered off into a train of narrative thought, just gently bring it back to both the sensations in your belly and the observation of your partner's breathing as well. Rising and falling, rising and falling. Now the next phase of this can feel pretty intense, so feel free to adjust your gaze as you see fit. If you're game for trying it, raise your gaze to silently look into the eyes of your partner. Don't try to communicate anything in particular. Just take in the experience of being with him or her. Allow yourself to notice your breath in the background 
while you focus most of your attention on taking in your partner's eyes. If at any point this starts to feel too uncomfortable, feel free to lower your gaze back to your partner's belly again. You can shift back and forth between the belly and the eyes to adjust the intensity of this experience. You don't have to keep your gaze at your partner's eyes, but if you're comfortable doing so, allow your eyes to rest there and notice any feelings that arise in the body and thoughts that arise in the mind, but then gently bring your attention back to looking at the eyes. Now continuing to gaze into your partner's eyes, if you're comfortable doing so, or allowing your gaze to be at your partner's belly, if that's more comfortable. Begin to imagine what your partner was like as a young child. Imagine him or her having a mother and a father and growing up with other children. Imagine how your partner went through the same sorts of stages that you did. Being an infant, then a toddler, going off to school, those early separations, becoming a teenager. Experiencing the trials and tribulations of adolescence. Perhaps eventually leaving home. Depending on their age and their life course. Maybe getting a job. Or having a family of their own. As you look at your partner, be aware that he or she has had thousands of moments of joy and sorrow, fear and anger, longing and fulfillment, just as you have. Take in the fact that he or she 
has probably had moments of feeling loved, of feeling successful, of feeling appreciated, as well as moments of feeling lonely, perhaps abandoned, perhaps feelings of failure. feelings of nobody recognizing him or her. And now begin to imagine how your partner will look as he or she gets older. Be aware that just like you, your partner will be dealing with the next stages of the life cycle. He or she will probably have to wrestle with infirmity and old age. Imagine how growing older will be for your partner. Imagine the aspects that will be pleasant and those that will be unpleasant. And finally, and this can be difficult, be aware that just like you, someday your partner will die. The molecules in his or her body that you're looking at now will recycle back into the earth or atmosphere and be transformed into something else. Notice how both of our lives are really just for these moments. Now that you've allowed yourself to imagine your partner younger, older, and even dying, bring your attention back to how he or she looks in the present. Just take in that this is your partner at this moment. And if you've been looking into your partner's eyes, allow your gaze to drop back down to their belly and breathe together for a few minutes, as we did before. See how it feels similar or different to be back at the level of the belly instead of looking into one another's eyes.
Notice both the rising and falling sensations in your own belly, as well as the subtle movement of your partner's belly. And now finally for the last few minutes of this practice, allow your eyes to close and come back into your own body, your own breath, and notice what that feels like. Again, if your mind wanders into narrative thought, just gently bring it back to the sensations of the breath, to this moment, in this body. Feel what it's like to be together, but with our attention on our own inner experience. And now to bring this practice to a close, I'll ring the bell and listen to the sound of the bell from the beginning of the ring until it trails off into space and can no longer be heard. Information about when and how to use the following meditation, along with a written transcript of the practice, can be found in the book The Mindfulness Solution, Everyday Practices for Everyday Problems, by Dr. Ronald Siegel. 
Please feel free to tell others how to access this recording at www.mindfulness-solution.com. But please do not independently reproduce or distribute this copyrighted recording without permission. Thank you. In this exercise, which will last about 30 minutes, we'll experiment with different ways to attend to the breath. Begin as you did in the breath awareness meditation by finding a comfortable, alert posture, spine more or less erect. Unless you're sleepy, you'll probably find it easiest to stay focused if your eyes are closed. We're going to try a number of ways to attend to the breath, each one for about five minutes and I'll give you instructions each time that we change to another way of attending. So begin as we did in the breath awareness meditation by simply noticing that you're already breathing. Sense the rising and falling of the belly with each breath. As you breathe in, the belly rises, and as you breathe out, the belly falls. See if you can follow the breath for complete cycles, from the beginning of an inhalation to the point of relative fullness, back down to the point where the lungs are more or less empty, and it begins again. When the mind begins to wander, as it inevitably will, just notice that the mind has gone off into thought and gently bring your attention back to the breath, like training the puppy. Again, we're not trying to regulate the breath. This isn't a breathing exercise, but simply an opportunity to pay attention to what's happening in the present, to be aware of our present experience with acceptance.
So now let's try a slight variation on this. Continue to follow the breath in the belly, noticing the sensations of rising and falling. Only this time, silently label in your mind the rising sensations as rising and the falling sensations as falling. Most of your attention will still be on the sensations themselves, but just gently, kind of in the background, note rising, falling, rising, falling, as your belly moves up and down. While making these mental notes is designed to help the mind stay focused on the sensations of the breath, it may still wander off. So whenever you notice that it's gone off into some chain of narrative thought, just bring your attention back to the rising and falling sensations in the belly and gently note them rising, falling. See if you can bring, bring an attitude of interest or curiosity to the moment-to-moment -moment sensations of each in-breath and each out-breath. Noting the belly rising and falling.
Now for the third variation, we're going to try noticing the sensation of the breath as it enters and leaves the tip of the nose. Toward the end of the breath awareness meditation, I had asked you to pay attention to the sensations of the ocean of air that surrounds us. And one place to feel that ocean of air is at the tip of the nose. So now without labeling it, just notice the slightly cool sensation at the tip of the nose that comes with each in-breath and the slightly warm sensation with each out-breath. You can allow the awareness of the belly rising and falling to be a bit in the background and bring your attention to the sensations at the tip of the nose, trying again to follow full cycles of breathing from the beginning of an inhalation all the way to the end of an exhalation. As before, when you notice your mind beginning to wander, just congratulate yourself on noticing and gently bring the attention back to the sensations of the tip of the nose. Notice how the sensations at the tip of the nose are slightly different from breath to breath.
Now for our fourth variation, we're going to continue to attend to the sensations of the breath at the tip of the nose, only adding noting. So as you breathe in, note in, and as you breathe out, note out. Again, most of the attention will be on the sensations of the breath, but just in the background, to help keep the mind focused, we'll note in and out, in and out. Whenever the mind wanders off into a chain of thought, just gently bring it back to the tip of the nose, silently noting in, out, in, out. If the mind is calm and focused, that's fine. If, on the other hand, the mind is active or frisky, that's okay too. Just continue bringing the attention back to the sensations of the tip of the nose and use noting to help maintain your focus.
Now that you've had an opportunity to sample attending to the breath both in the belly and at the tip of the nose, for this next exercise, the fifth in our series, choose either. Choose either the tip of the nose sensations or the rising and falling of the belly sensations. And we're going to try another means of focusing attention, which is counting the breaths. This can be done in different ways, but for now, let's try counting the out-breaths. So whether observed at the tip of the nose or in the belly, each time you breathe out, count. We're going to count 1 to 10 and then begin again at 1. And as you did with the noting, have most of your attention be on the sensations themselves but allow yourself to note in the form of counting each out-breath. Again, when you get up to 10, just return your count to 1 again. If you lose count completely, just start at 1 again then as well. Should your mind wander off to the point where you lose count, just come back gently to number one again. Again, try to maintain some interest and curiosity in each breath, noticing how each one is different from the one that came before it and the one that follows.
And now for our sixth and final variation, we're going to continue to count the out breaths, only this time make it into a little bit of a game and try to count the out breaths all the way up to 100. If you find that your mind has wandered off into some kind of chain of narrative thought, so you begin to lose count, simply start over and see how high up you get each time. You can count the out-breath either at the tip of the nose or in the sensations of falling of the belly with each cycle of breath. Keep going as high as you can until the mind loses attention. And when the mind begins to wander, just gently come back to number one and try again. Try to notice each breath in this moment. As though it were a strange and unique experience. In a moment, I'll ring a bell to bring this exercise to a close and listen to the sound of the bell from the beginning of the ring 
until it trails off and is no longer audible. And then when you're done with this exercise, you may find it useful to take some notes on page 62 and 63 of the Mindfulness Solution and notice the way, just note on the paper, the ways in which these six different variations of following the breath felt different to you. Information about when and how to use the following meditation, along with a written transcript of the practice, can be found in the book, The Mindfulness Solution, Everyday Practices for Everyday Problems, by Dr. Ronald Siegel. Please feel free to tell others how to access this recording at www.mindfulness-solution.com but please do not independently reproduce or distribute this copyrighted recording without permission. Thank you. This is another sort of meditation practice that you can use either as an alternative to breath awareness or other trainings or integrate into a period of other, other meditation practice. And we'll do it here together for about 10 minutes on this recording, but then you can continue practicing afterwards. And in this practice, we'll simply use sound as our object of attention instead of using the breath or the footfall as you would in walking meditation or the taste of food as you would in eating meditation. So begin for a few moments with your breath. Find a comfortable posture where your spine is more or less erect and you can feel alert and planted solidly. And follow the breath for a few cycles, either in the belly or at the tip of the nose. And now begin to allow the breath to be in the background and bring your attention to your sense of hearing. Notice all of the sounds around you. My voice any other sounds in your environment. And listen as you might listen to a symphony, hearing all of the different notes and how they combine with one another. Not labeling the sounds, not identifying where they come from, but simply taking in their sensory quality, listening as though it were all music.
notice how seemingly continuous sounds actually change moment by moment. Nothing is solid. See if you can generate some interest or curiosity toward the sound striking your ears. And if you notice that the mind begins to wander or gets hijacked by a chain of thought, as soon as you notice that you've left the experience of hearing, just gently bring your attention back to the sounds around you. Notice that you don't need to reach out and chase after the sounds, but you can simply open your awareness and allow all of the sound to come to you. Notice how seemingly solid sounds begin to change just by paying attention to them over time. We notice different aspects of the sound.
And to bring this brief listening meditation practice to a close, I'll ring the bell and listen to the bell carefully from the very beginning of the ring all the way until it's trailed off into space and you can no longer hear it. Of course, feel free to continue the practice after the sound of the bell has faded. Information about when and how to use the following meditation, along with a written transcript of the practice, can be found in the book, The Mindfulness Solution, Everyday Practices for Everyday Problems, by Dr. Ronald Siegel. Please feel free to tell others how to access this recording at www.mindfulness-solution.com but please do not independently reproduce or distribute this copyrighted recording without permission. Thank you. This meditation will take about 25 minutes. We'll begin with a few minutes of breath awareness practice and then move into loving-kindness meditation. So find a comfortable posture with a more or less erect spine. Your eyes can be open or closed. And begin to notice that you're already breathing. And simply bring the attention to the breath in the body wherever it's most obvious, perhaps at the tip of the nose, perhaps with the rising and falling sensations in the belly. And begin to follow the cycle of the breath through full cycles from the beginning of an inhalation to the point where your lungs are relatively full, back down to the point where the lungs are relatively empty, and a new cycle begins. When you notice your mind wandering, becoming hijacked into a train of discursive thought, just gently bring your attention back to the sensations of the breath in the body.
it doesn't matter whether the breath is short and shallow or long and deep. We're just practicing awareness of whatever our present experience is with acceptance. And now, allowing the breath to be a little bit more in the background, we're going to begin repeating silently to ourselves loving-kindness phrases. These are designed to evoke a sense of friendliness or acceptance. But as with all of the different meditations we've been doing, whatever arises we try to welcome, so that should there be paradoxical responses in which you feel things other than friendliness or loving-kindness, try to welcome those as well. There are many different phrases that can be used, and you can choose for yourself whichever ones work. I'll offer a few here. This also can be directed first toward yourself or toward another, but in this practice today we'll start with ourselves. May I be happy. May I be peaceful. May I be free from suffering. So just repeat silently to yourself these phrases. May I be happy. May I be peaceful. May I be free from suffering. Let the silent phrases be your object of meditation in the same way that your breath was previously. So if the mind wanders from the phrases, just gently bring your attention back to them. And see if you can feel in your body and in your heart the sentiment of the phrases. So may I really be happy. May I be peaceful. May I be free from suffering.
an alternative set of classical phrases, and you can mix and match these, is, may I be safe? May I be healthy? May I live with ease? It'll take a little experimentation to try on one set of phrases, another set, or to modify these to fit whatever your particular circumstance is. If you find yourself stuck in a particular kind of thought pattern or difficulty, you can add phrases to address that. For instance, may I be happy? May I be peaceful? May I be free from suffering. May I learn to let go. May I accept whatever comes. May I have the courage to face my fears. May I be forgiving. May I be happy. May I be peaceful. May I be free from suffering. Once you hit on a set of phrases, that seem to fit for you. Try to work with just them for a while, rather than changing from phrase to phrase. In another phase of this practice, we bring to mind a benefactor, somebody toward whom we easily feel friendliness or loving kindness or appreciation. This can be a friend, 
a family member, or somebody that you know in the world, or it can be a spiritual teacher, or even a mythological figure. living or not, so it could be Jesus, the Buddha, the Dalai Lama, or your best friend, your spouse, anyone for whom you can readily feel an appreciation and a sense of love and kindness. And then direct the same energy toward them using the same phrases. May you be happy. May you be peaceful. May you be free from suffering. Or perhaps May you be safe. May you be healthy. May you live with ease. And try to hold the image of your benefactor in your mind as you direct these wishes or intentions toward them. May you be happy. May you be peaceful. May you be free from suffering. And once you've worked with generating these wishes or intentions toward a benefactor, you can begin to expand it out to other people in your life. And this can be another person who is having particular difficulties at the moment, or just somebody that you know well. Again, friends, family, members, co-workers, it doesn't matter. But begin to expand it out to someone else. May you be happy. May you be peaceful. May you be free from suffering.
May you be safe. May you be healthy. May you live with ease. And if you like, you can try expanding out these intentions or wishes to a larger group, perhaps a number of family members or people who are around you now or a group of friends, a group of co-workers. And imagining the group in your mind, may you be happy, may you be peaceful, May you be free from suffering. And then you might expand this out to a larger group. People in a community that you're part of. May you all be happy. May you all be peaceful. May you all be free from suffering. And you can send these same good intentions or warm wishes to perhaps the whole city that you live in, or a county, or a state. May you all be happy. May you all be peaceful. May you all be free from suffering.
and you might extend this out to all the people on the planet. May you all be happy. May you all be peaceful. May you all be free from suffering. And finally, we can extend it out to all sentient beings, every living thing that can experience pleasure and pain. May all beings be happy. May all beings be peaceful. May all beings be free from suffering. And we'll close this with the bell and listen to the sound of the bell from the beginning of its ringing until the sound has trailed off into space and can no longer be heard. Information about when and how to use the following meditation, along with a written transcript of the practice, can be found in the book, The Mindfulness Solution, Everyday Practices for Everyday Problems, by Dr. Ronald Siegel. Please feel free to tell others how to access this recording at www.mindfulness-solution.com but please do not independently reproduce or distribute this copyrighted recording without permission. Thank you. In this meditation, which will only last about 10 minutes, you're going to imagine being a mountain going through changes with the seasons. So begin by finding a comfortable posture, sitting erect, and solid like a mountain. Feel yourself firmly planted on the ground, whether on a chair or on a meditation cushion. And now imagine that you're a mountain, and you're very large and very solid and you've been sitting in the same spot for a long, long time. 
Of course, like all things, you change, but you change very slowly in geologic time. At this particular moment, it's springtime. There is life everywhere. The trees all have new leaves, flowers are in bloom, and insects are flying all about. Animals are taking care of their young. The birds are back from their migrations. Every day is different. Sometimes it's cloudy, cool, and raining. Other times it's sunny and warm. Sometimes fierce storms pass through with lightning and thunder. Other times the air is completely still and peaceful. Night turns to day, day turns to night. You sit there, experiencing life unfolding everywhere. As night turns to day and day turns to night, you begin to notice that the days are getting longer and the nights are becoming shorter. Each one is different. And you notice that it's beginning to get warmer in the days and the nights don't cool off so much. And now you begin to notice that it stays light until quite late. Sometimes it's quite warm and the animals seek shade. You notice that insects are now everywhere, buzzing about, crawling, flying. Young animals now are venturing out on their own. You realize that it's become summer. Sometimes it's hot and humid. Other times violent thunderstorms rumble through, lightning strikes, rain falls in buckets. Sometimes the streams gush and tumble down your sides. Other times they're nearly dry. All this activity, day after day, and you sit there quite solid, experiencing it all. Night turns to day and day turns to night and you begin to notice that the days are starting to get shorter again. They stay quite warm, but night falls sooner. And now the sun is setting noticeably earlier, and the nights are beginning to have a little bit of a cool crisp in the air. Leaves are starting to change color a bit, and animals are preparing for the winter to come. You notice that birds are starting to leave. Now, too, every day is different. Some are sunny and warm, but some are really cool and crisp. Days turn to night, night turns to day. The leaves continue to change. Each day they're different. Some days they're brilliant in color. Sometimes it rains gently, other times it's stormy. Other times it's quiet and peaceful. The days continue to shorten until now it's really getting dark early and the nights are really feeling cold. Many of the trees have dropped their leaves and plants have turned from green to brown. And you begin to notice occasionally that instead of rain, snow falls. Just a few flakes here and there at first. Until one day you notice that all has turned white. Everything is transformed. The streams are frozen. Now it's winter and you see animals only occasionally. Mostly you notice just their tracks. There are relatively few birds around and the insects seem to have disappeared completely. Some days are still sunny and warmer, but others are really quite cold. Fierce storms come through with blinding snow and biting wind. Sometimes the snow blows so violently that all that can be seen is white everywhere. 
but you sit there as a mountain, solid, fearless, experiencing it all. Night turns to day and days turn to night, and you notice that the days are getting longer again. Some days it's actually warm enough that the snow begins to melt from the trees. Droplets appear, little icicles form. Occasionally even there's some flow of the streams, they begin to thaw. But then other days it all freezes solid again. But as night turns to day and day turns to night, more of the warm periods appear. And eventually melting starts and you see bare ground. At first everything is kind of muddy and brown. But then the first green shoots begin to appear. And then more young plants arrive, and birds start to come back. And soon the last of the white is gone. And now it's everything is green. And there's life everywhere, and animals starting their new families and you realize that a full year has passed and another cycle is beginning. And now as a mountain, begin to find your way back into the place that you're sitting and notice your breath. and see how it feels to breathe as a mountain on this spot. And listen as I ring the bell and allow the sound of the bell to bring you back into the room as you follow the sound until it trails off into space. Information about when and how to use the following meditation, along with a written transcript of the practice, can be found in the book, The Mindfulness Solution, Everyday Practices for Everyday Problems, by Dr. Ronald Siegel. Please feel free to tell others how to access this recording at www.mindfulness-solution.com but please do not independently reproduce or distribute this copyrighted recording without permission. Thank you. It's possible to cultivate concentration and mindfulness in any physical posture. Traditionally, meditation is taught in four postures, sitting, lying down, walking, and standing. Each of these is more suited to one or another kind of meditation. Lying down, walking, and standing are pretty straightforward, but finding a good posture for sitting meditation takes a little bit of practice. Sitting meditation can be done in a chair, usually using a straight back chair, on meditation cushions, or on a meditation bench. If you're using a chair, it's a good idea to either sit with your back supported against the, the back of the chair, and this helps if the chair is such that you can do this and have your back be more or less straight, or to sit forward a little bit so that your back is 
supported by itself as though it's a column of building blocks with your spine more or less erect. If you're using meditation cushions, it's a good idea to have something soft underneath you, such as a folded blanket, and then to have the cushions be high enough so you can form a stable triangle between your knees and your buttocks. The triangle will make it easier to, to sit for a longer period of time and will give you a sense of stability and dignity as you meditate. You may want to experiment a bit with the position of your feet, either to have one foot folded over the ankle and the calf of the other leg, or to have them one in front of the other in front of you. It'll be important to have enough height in the cushions so that your legs don't fall asleep and so that you can feel a sense of stability. If you're using a meditation bench, you sit on the bench and allow your legs to fold underneath you with your shins and knees against the floor. Here too it's helpful to have a folded blanket underneath you to make it more comfortable and perhaps an additional pillow on top of the meditation bench to give you enough height and to make that comfortable as well. Regardless of whether you're using a chair, meditation cushions, or a bench, it's a good idea to have a more or less straight spine. One way to find this is to imagine a string tied to the top of your head pulling gently toward the ceiling, elongating your spine. You'll notice that that makes your chin very, very slightly tuck itself in, and you'll have a sense of alertness as the spine becomes elongated. Over time, as you practice meditation, you can experiment with different positions and postures to find the ones that work best for each practice. Information about when and how to use the following meditation, along with a written transcript of the practice, can be found in the book The Mindfulness Solution, Everyday Practices for Everyday Problems, by Dr. Ronald Siegel. Please feel free to tell others how to access this recording at www.mindfulness-solution.com, but please do not independently reproduce or distribute this copyrighted recording without permission. Thank you. This, the Raisin Meditation, will take about 20 minutes to complete. We'll spend the first 10 minutes or so doing breath practice, and then the next 10 minutes paying attention to our morsel of food. You can use a raisin, or you could use another piece of dried fruit, such as a dried cranberry, or perhaps a piece of a date or a fig, or any other small piece of food that can be eaten slowly. So begin to find your breath, either in your belly or at the tip of your nose. And see if you can bring your attention to full cycles of breathing, from the beginning of an inhalation to the point of relative fullness, down to the point where your lungs are relatively empty, and the cycle begins again.
Notice any feelings arising having to do with the fact that we're about to eat something. Perhaps anticipation, positive, or maybe negative if you don't like what you've chosen. Allow those feelings to be in the background and gently return your attention to the breath. If you like, you can use one of the noting methods that we explored in the breath practice sampler, either silently noting to yourself, rising and falling if you're attending to the breath in the belly, or in, out, at the tip of the nose, or counting the breaths. Should your mind begin to wander, as it tends to do, as soon as you notice that it's caught in a chain of narrative thoughts, just gently bring your attention back to the sensations of the breath. Remember, this is like puppy training. The mind wanders off, we bring it back. It wanders off again, we bring it back again. See if you can bring an attitude of interest or curiosity to the breath, seeing how each breath is different from the one that came before it. Should discomfort arise in the body, try a little bit to not move, to not do things to fix it, but just to notice the sensations and bring your attention back to the breath. 
If they become very uncomfortable, feel free to adjust your posture, but see what it's like to not act on that impulse as soon as it arises. You attend to the breath as though there's nowhere else to go, nothing else to do, just this moment. Now, if your eyes have been closed, allow them to open and pick up your raisin or other piece of food between your thumb and your forefinger and begin to examine it. I'll assume for the purpose of these instructions that you have a raisin and begin to examine all of the hills and valleys in the raisin, where it's shiny and where it's dull. Perhaps you can see the spot where it attached to the grapevine. Just take it in as though it were an object of beauty, something rare and wonderful that you had discovered. And once you have a good sense of what the raisin looks like, allow your eyes to close again and explore the raisin through your sense of touch. Feel what it's like moving it between your thumb and forefinger and take in all of those sensations. Notice how experiencing the raisin through touch is different from experiencing it through sight.
Next, and this is going to feel a little bit odd, paying attention to the movement of your hand and your arm, bring the raisin until it's just outside of your ear canal. Resist any temptation that you might have to insert the raisin, and roll it between your thumb and forefinger, and see if you can detect the faint crackling sound that a raisin makes. Take in your raisin through hearing. And once you've listened to your raisin, gently bring your hand to hold the raisin beneath your nostrils. And breathe in through one nostril and then the other. And take in the raisin aroma. Take it in through your sense of smell. See if perhaps the aroma is different in intensity through one nostril than through the other. And once you've smelled the raisin, Gently bring it in front of your lips. Notice any impulses that arise. And allow your tongue to reach out and capture the raisin as only it knows how to do. And then hold the raisin between your tongue and the roof of your mouth. Notice how your mouth responds to the presence of the raisin. Notice, too, any feeling reactions that you have. Allow yourself to breathe. And now begin to use your tongue to explore the touch sensation of the raisin. See if the raisin begins to change as you explore it. Notice how this is different from exploring the raisin with your eyes, with your thumb and forefinger, with your ears, or with your nose. Next, position the raisin between your upper and lower molars and just hold it there for a few moments. Notice what that feels like. And once, but only once, bring your molars together and see what you experience. Then 
Now recapture the raisin with your tongue and explore your handiwork. Notice the touch sensations with your tongue, the flavor sensations, how your mouth responds with saliva, the whole experience. Now very slowly and deliberately allow yourself to continue chewing the raisin, feeling each bite. When it naturally occurs, notice the swallow reflex and how the raisin adroitly makes its way down your throat and toward your stomach. When the time comes that the raisin is mostly gone, notice how your mouth feels after the raisin. Notice any impulses that arise, perhaps to have another raisin, or perhaps the urge to floss. Just continue to take in the experience. And once the raisin is really all gone, allow yourself to come back to your breath. Noticing the rising and falling sensations in the belly or the sensations at the tip of your nose. I'll bring this meditation to a close by ringing the bell and listen to the sound of the bell from the beginning of its ring until the sound has drifted off into, the, into space and can no longer be heard. Information about when and how to use the following meditation, along with a written transcript of the practice, can be found in the book, The Mindfulness Solution, Everyday Practices for Everyday Problems, by Dr. Ronald Siegel. Please feel free to tell others how to access this recording at www.mindfulness-solution.com but please do not independently reproduce or distribute this copyrighted recording without permission. Thank you. This meditation, separating the two arrows, is very helpful for working with pain and other bodily discomfort. 
You'll need about 20 minutes to follow this recording. We're going to begin with about 10 minutes of breath practice. And then once we have some concentration and the mind's a bit settled, shift to working with the bodily discomfort itself. So find a comfortable posture in which your spine is more or less erect. You feel alert. And begin to tend to the sensations of your breath. Notice either the rising and falling sensations in your belly or the sensations at the tip of your nose. See if you can follow your breath for full cycles from the beginning of an inhalation to the point of relative fullness, back down till your lungs are relatively empty, and the cycle begins again. When thoughts enter the mind, as they inevitably do, just notice that you're thinking and gently bring your attention back to the sensations of the breath. If bodily discomfort arises, for the moment, try to allow that to be more in the background and bring your attention primarily to the breath. See if you can follow the breath with precision to really notice each of the sensations accompanying an in-breath and an out-breath. Try to examine its complex and varied qualities and notice how one breath is never exactly the same as the next. See if you can develop a sense of interest or curiosity in the minute changing sensations. Whenever your mind drifts off from the sensations of the breath, just gently bring it back, like training the puppy.
Stay with the breath as though there were nowhere else to go, no better thing to do. Just this breath in this moment to be with. Sometimes the breath will be shallow or rapid, other times slower or deeper. Just observe each breath anew. Try to really notice the particular textures and sensations of this breath. Now that you've had a few minutes of developing concentration by staying with the breath, we're going to shift our attention to wherever there's discomfort in the body. If you like, you can pause the meditation at this point and spend some more time on breath practice before moving on. So if you're ready, begin to shift your focus to wherever you feel the most discomfort in your body. There may be mild sensations or strong ones. The idea is to allow your breath to settle into the background and bring the painful or uncomfortable sensations to the foreground. Begin by just bringing your attention to the general area of the pain. Relax and settle into the physical sensations. Try to carefully observe their nature. Are they burning, tight, piercing, dull, sharp? Just notice what's happening in the general area of the pain.
try not to hold your breath or grasp at it, but allow yourself to breathe naturally in the background as you bring your attention to the area of discomfort. And once you have a general sense of the area of the pain, see if you can narrow your focus and zero in on the particular spot in your body where you feel the most discomfort. Try to experience that spot with precision, interest, and curiosity. What exactly is happening here? Not in terms of understanding the physiological or anatomical event, but just what's happening in your awareness. What exactly can you notice if you zero in and observe carefully? See if you can notice how the sensations change subtly from moment to moment. Perhaps one moment there's throbbing. In another moment there's aching. Perhaps burning or stabbing mixes in. You're not trying to change the experience, but you're practicing being with it. You may be able to notice that the pain or discomfort is actually a series of momentary sensations strung together like frames in a movie, providing the illusion of continuity, but really being made up of separate sensations, one right next to the other. If the pain sensations or other discomfort is particularly intense, you may find that you start to feel overwhelmed or that your mind recoils from the painful sensations. If this happens, experiment with bringing your attention back to the general area of the pain, as though you're pulling the camera back a bit. You can even find respite, if it's really overwhelming, in bringing the attention back to the breath for a few minutes. But once you no longer feel overwhelmed, see if you can zero in closer, either to the general area or to the precise location of the discomfort.
If you notice your body tensing up against the pain, see if you can relax that to bring your attention closer toward it, closer into the pain. We're trying to open to every sensation that's there and relax into it. As you continue this practice, if you notice thoughts about the pain or discomfort rising in the mind, you might experiment with labeling them. Whether you're fearing it, hating the sensations, worrying about the sensations. Just notice how the thoughts are actually independent of the sensations themselves. After briefly noting them, Bring your attention back to the sensations. And now for the last minute or so of this practice, begin to shift your attention back to the breath again, allowing the sensations of discomfort or pain to fall more to the background. And try to stay with the breath through full cycles beginning bringing interest or curiosity to the sensations of breathing. And now to bring our attention back to the outer world, I'll ring the bell and listen to the bell from the beginning of its ring until the sound can no longer be heard as it trails off into space.
Information about when and how to use the following meditation, along with a written transcript of the practice, can be found in the book, The Mindfulness Solution, Everyday Practices for Everyday Problems, by Dr. Ronald Siegel. Please feel free to tell others how to access this recording at www.mindfulness-solution.com but please do not independently reproduce or distribute this copyrighted recording without permission. Thank you. This practice is designed to help us learn to be able to be with rather than resist sadness. We'll begin with a few minutes of silent meditation, focusing on the breath. So find a comfortable posture in which your spine is more or less erect. And notice that you're already breathing. And bring your attention to the breath either in the belly or at the tip of the nose. And try to follow the breath for complete cycles, from the beginning of an inhalation, to the point of relative fullness, back down to where the lungs are relatively empty, and it begins again. and allow yourself to feel the various sensations in the body that surround the breath. Practicing being aware of whatever we're experiencing with acceptance. When the mind begins to wander, just gently bring it back to the sensations of the breath and the body. And see if you can develop some interest or curiosity in the sensations of the breath and the other sensations in the body.
And now that you've been with the breath for a little while, begin to scan your body for sensations associated with sadness. See if there's any bit of sadness there and see where in your body you might experience that. If you don't notice any sensations in the body of sadness, see if you can generate them. Perhaps by thinking of something that might make you sad now or that usually makes you sad. And notice exactly where you feel that sadness in your body. Perhaps it's in the chest or the throat or the face and the eyes. Survey your whole body to see where the sadness shows up. Notice the form and the texture of the sad feelings. Now see if you can make the feelings of sadness grow. You might be able to do this by just continuing to focus on the sensations in the body. Or perhaps you'll need to generate other thoughts or images to make the feelings of sensation stronger, the feelings of sadness stronger. The idea is to try to ramp up these feelings to their maximum intensity so you can really work with increasing your capacity to bear them. You may need to be creative about this to find a way to generate the sadness. Now see if you can find their maximum intensity to see just how strong a feeling of sadness you can generate while sitting here. If tears come, just let them flow and understand that whatever arises is just a feeling and it won't last forever. And once you've got what feels like the maximum level of sadness that you can generate. See if you can hold it at that level. For the next few minutes, just try to be with that sadness. And if it begins to fade very much, see if you can bring it back to its former intensity.
welcome the sadness as though it were your friend. Just stay with the sensations wherever they show up in the body. And if the mind starts to wander, or the sensations start to fade, just bring the attention back to the sensations of sadness in the body, or to whatever images or thoughts you need to generate them. Again, try to keep the sadness going. If it fades or your mind wanders, come back to the sensations of sadness in the body or the thoughts or the images that help you to generate those sensations. Notice how you have the capacity to feel whatever arises.
Now that you've been with the feeling of sadness for a while, allow your attention to come back to the breath. Notice it rising and falling in your belly or the sensations at the tip of your nose. And allow whatever sadness feelings are there to still be there, but a little bit more in the background now as the foreground becomes the sensations of the breath. As before, if your mind wanders, just gently bring it back to the sensations of the breathing. What's happening in your body at this moment with each breath? And now to bring this to a close, I'll ring the bell and listen to the bell from the beginning of the ringing to the point where it trails off into space. Information about when and how to use the following meditation, along with a written transcript of the practice, can be found in the book, The Mindfulness Solution, Everyday Practices for Everyday Problems, by Dr. Ronald Siegel. Please feel free to tell others how to access this recording at www.mindfulness-solution.com but please do not independently reproduce or distribute this copyrighted recording without permission. Thank you. This can be done as a variation of any other meditation practice, and it's a way to work with the thoughts that inevitably arise. So we'll do it for about 10 minutes now, as part of a breath awareness practice. Find a comfortable posture where you're sitting more or less erect. Settle into your chair or your meditation cushion or bench and begin to bring your attention to the breath. Notice either the sensations of rising and falling in the belly or perhaps the sensations of the breath at the tip of the nose. 
and try to follow it through complete cycles. Now before long, you'll probably notice some thoughts beginning to arise. And as soon as you notice the thought, silently and gently in the background, give it a label. You don't need too many categories here, but you might label a thought as planning, doubting, judging, fantasizing, obsessing, criticizing. Just pick a few categories that seem to apply to the kinds of thoughts that arise in your mind and let the practice be a breath-focused practice as you've done before. But each time the mind wanders onto a thought, as soon as you notice that you think that you're in the process of thinking, just silently and quietly label it and bring your attention back to the breath. An alternative, if this starts to feel too complicated, is simply to make a mental note, thinking, each time a thought arises, without necessarily labeling the type of thought. You can experiment and see which method seems to help you pay the most attention to what's happening. Do this with a light touch, so that whenever you notice a thought beginning to arise, just very lightly note what it is and bring your attention back to the breath.
Should you notice that a particular thought pattern repeats and comes back over and over, you can make up a funny label for these greatest hits. Give them your own names, such as the I blew it again thought or I can't get no respect tape. I never get what I want thought and so on. The idea isn't so much to stop your mind from generating thoughts, because that's impossible, but rather to notice where it goes and the quality of the thoughts that arise, and then gently bring your attention back to the breath. The particular labels you use aren't critical. The idea is just to be aware of your present experience with acceptance and to use the thought labeling to be more aware of what's happening in your thinking process and how it brings you away from the breath. And while I'll stop these instructions now, you can continue sitting and doing thought labeling as long as you wish. Information about when and how to use the following meditation, along with a written transcript of the practice, can be found in the book The Mindfulness Solution, Everyday Practices for Everyday Problems, by Dr. Ronald Siegel. Please feel free to tell others how to access this recording at www.mindfulness-solution.com, but please do not independently reproduce or distribute this copyrighted recording without permission. Thank you. Tang Len practice can be done by itself or as part of other formal meditation practices. We'll begin with a few minutes of breath meditation and then launch into the Tonglen practice. Altogether, we'll spend about 10 minutes or so. So begin by following your breath, whether in the belly or at the tip of the nose, and see if you can follow it for entire cycles from the beginning of an inhalation to the point of fullness, back down to the point where the lungs are relatively empty, and another cycle begins.
When the mind wanders, gently bring it back to the sensations of the breath. Now generate in your mind an image of somebody who you know is suffering right now. If you're working with sadness, anger, or depression, perhaps you can find an image of somebody who is particularly sad or angry or despairing. And now bringing your attention back to your breath, with every in-breath, imagine breathing in the pain of the suffering person. And with every out-breath, send that person peace, happiness, or whatever you imagine would alleviate his or her suffering. So we breathe in their pain, and we breathe out good wishes toward them. This can feel a little overwhelming at first, but if you stay with it, you'll find that a rhythm begins to emerge. Breathing in the other's pain and suffering, and breathing out happiness, peace, well-being for them. If the feelings don't arrive exactly as expected, that's okay. As in all the meditations, we try to approach it with an attitude of acceptance, allowing whatever arises to arise, but bringing our attention back to the task. So with each in-breath we bring, breathe in the pain, the sadness, the anger of the other person. And with each out-breath we send them happiness, peace, ease, well-being, whatever they need. If you're finding yourself to be 
particularly inundated with a lot of pain and difficulty, you can try a variation on this in which you breathe in your own pain or anger or sadness along with that of all the other people in the world who may be feeling similarly at this moment. And as you breathe out, wish yourself and everybody else peace, well-being, ease, whatever you and they might need. So you breathe in your own suffering along with everyone else's and breathe out well-being for yourself and everyone else. Whichever way you do this, breathe in the suffering, breathe out the well-being. Breathe in the suffering, breathe out the well-being. If your mind wanders and you lose touch with the practice, just gently bring it back and come back to breathing in the suffering, whether of a particular other person or of yourself and all other people, and breathe out the intention for well-being for the particular other person or perhaps for yourself and everyone else who's suffering similarly. And if you like, you can stop this recording now and practice this for a longer time. Or if this is all the time you have to devote to it, continue the recording and bring your attention back to your breath. Whether in the belly or at the tip of the nose. And just bring your attention back to the sensations of being here and of your body.
Come back to the present. Sensations here and now. And I'll ring the bell and listen to the sound of the bell from when it first begins until the sound trails off into space and into the wider world. Information about when and how to use the following meditation, along with a written transcript of the practice, can be found in the book, The Mindfulness Solution, Everyday Practices for Everyday Problems, by Dr. Ronald Siegel. Please feel free to tell others how to access this recording at www.mindfulness-solution.com but please do not independently reproduce or distribute this copyrighted recording without permission. Thank you. This practice can be helpful when we find ourselves compulsively acting on some kind of a craving, whether for food, for an intoxicating substance, or any other activity that we do to try to make a feeling go away. We'll do about five minutes of breath awareness practice and then do the urge surfing itself. So begin by finding your breath, finding an alert posture in which your spine is more or less erect, and bring your attention to your breathing either at the tip of your nose or in your belly. and try and follow the breath for a complete cycle from the beginning of an inhalation to the point of fullness back down to the point of relative emptiness and another cycle begins see if you can allow whatever cravings or desires you've got to be a little bit in the background at first while you bring your attention to the breath Each time you notice your mind heading off into some kind of chain of thought, gently bring it back to the sensations in the belly or at the tip of the nose. Even if a craving or an urge feels kind of intense, see if you can allow it to be in the background, bringing your attention to the breath 
over and over. Now begin to allow the breath to be more in the background and bring your attention to any urge or craving you might feel, anything that you're desiring. Your breath will be like your surfboard, allowing you to ride the wave of the craving without being wiped out. Begin to visualize the craving as a wave in the ocean. Notice how it begins as a small wavelet and then builds until it crests. Just use your breath to ride the wave. As long as you stay with the breath, you won't be overwhelmed. Allow each wave to rise as high as it wants and ride each one until it peters out near the shore. Feel the texture, the form, the detail in each desire. Feel exactly how it manifests in the body. And stay with your breath as a surfboard, using it to ride each wave of craving. You can experiment with how much of your attention you place on the breath sensations and how much you place on the sensations of the craving or the urge. But either way, notice how the urges arise, reach something of a crescendo, and then eventually subside for a bit before arising again.
you're welcome to continue the practice of urge surfing. But if you'd like to bring it to a close for the moment, for the next minute or so, bring your attention back to the breath and allow the urges or cravings to be more in the background. Notice the rising and falling sensations of the breath in the belly or the changing sensations at the tip of the nose. And try again to follow the breath through full cycles. And to bring this to a close and to bring your attention back into the wider world, I'll ring the bell and listen from the beginning of the ring until the sound trails off into space and can no longer be heard. Information about when and how to use the following meditation, along with a written transcript of the practice, can be found in the book, The Mindfulness Solution, Everyday Practices for Everyday Problems, by Dr. Ronald Siegel. Please feel free to tell others how to access this recording at www.mindfulness-solution.com but please do not independently reproduce or distribute this copyrighted recording without permission. Thank you. This practice, urge surfing, can be used for pain, for cravings, for any sort of acute discomfort that threatens to overwhelm us. We'll practice it for about 10 minutes right now. First, We'll begin with the breath, so find a comfortable posture and notice the breath either in the belly or at the tip of the nose. And see if you can follow the breath for, a full, for full cycles. From the beginning of an inhalation to the point where the lungs are relatively full back down to when they're relatively empty, and the cycle begins again. Try to let the breath be in the foreground while the pain or discomfort is in the background.
try to develop some interest or curiosity in the sensations of the breath. Now turn your attention to where you're feeling discomfort, to precisely where the pain is in your body. And try to attend to those sensations with curiosity and interest. See how they change from moment to moment. In this approach, if the urge to get up or stop your activity arises, notice exactly where in your body you feel the urge. Notice where you feel the urge to get up, the urge to make a change. Bring your full attention to this urge to get things to change, noticing its intensity and texture. See how the urge to get up or stop or get relief is actually separate from the pain sensations themselves. Allow your attention to partially stay with the breath as well. And see if you can use your breath as a surfboard to ride each wave of urgency from its beginning as a little wavelet to the point where it crests, where the feeling of, oh, I've just got to get up, I've just got to do something, reaches its maximum intensity. Allow each wave to rise as high as it wants, trusting that it'll reach a crescendo and then subside again. It feels like I just have to do something, but then we stay with the breath and it relaxes. The urge changes. Just continue in this manner, bringing your attention to the pain sensations, noticing urges that arise to get up or shift or make them go away, and then use your breath to ride those urges, to see them arise, reach a crescendo, and eventually subside until the next wave arises. Should thoughts arise during this process, which they probably will, 
and your attention goes away both from the breath and from the pain, just gently bring it back, starting with the breath and then zeroing in on the pain sensations and then noticing any urges that arise to get relief. As you practice surfing those urges, you'll develop more and more ease at being able to stay with the pain. And watch it go through its inevitable changes. So now for the last minute or so, bring your attention back to the breath and see if you can allow the pain as well as the urges to become a little bit more the background. And to bring your attention back to the room, I'll ring the bell and listen to the sound of the bell from the very beginning of the ring until it trails off into space. 